thank you for the time. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? <laughs> okay, um, so, uh, I'm so nervous here, but um, let me introduce myself before I present my uh, study, uh, which is the title Delay Chemotherapy in the Snowsia and Fomitin in Patient with Cancer. What nurse can do? My name is Komang Yudhidriana, you can call me Komang. I'm from Indonesia, especially from Bali Island. Maybe you ever heard of Bali. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, today I want to say thank you also for the committee uh, who bring my, uh, who give me the scholarship so I can be here and be a part of SIO 58 today. Um, so thank you so much for the committee. Okay, yeah, let's start the... Okay. okay, the background of my study, uh, it says um, chemotherapy in the nausea and vomiting are because CINV is one of the most disturbing frightening symptoms for cancer patients who uh, depends on the dose and type of chemotherapy drugs as we know. And about 60% of pediatric patients undergoing chemotherapy experience these symptoms. And they are at risk of physical and physical social problems, such as anorexia, weight loss, lack of nutrition, poor functional status, and so anxiety also. And if it continue um, regularly, they can have a variety of negative effects, such as maybe um, from the cost or length of stay, like that. And the other, uh, although many advances have reached in CIMC management, but about only half all of the patients who undergo sufficient moderately or high emetogenic chemotherapy still complain about the delayed symptoms of nausea and vomiting, especially in children. And CINV conditions are often underestimated by health professionals right now. And more than 75% have ignored delayed CINV. Health practitioners tend to set the control of CINV symptoms less treatment. Uh, and study from Crocs No et al. 2018 revealed that there was low compliance in making prescription which followed the recommendation of anti-emetic gaslighting by health practitioners in delayed pace about 25 until 120 hours after emetic chemotherapy. And the purpose of this my literal review is to describe the mechanism of delayed CI and C in pediatric patients etiology assessment strategies that can be carried out and management of prevention and control of CIMC and pediatric patients. The epidemiology, uh, about 20, 22 pediatric patients out of 24 underwent chemotherapy, which is blood and experience vomiting due to chemotherapy. In 57% in of the chemotherapy cycles underwent. And the symptoms is higher incidence uh, than the other side effect of chemotherapy. And for the children uh, two years old, have an independent factors also in the occurrence of CINV. And previous research, 25 pediatric patients who suffered from cancer and get a chemotherapy experience nausea and vomiting after chemotherapy. And about 11 children experienced delayed nausea and vomiting. Another uh, epidemiology is uh, incidence of CINV. Also, uh, there's so many in the, the number one and the largest number is in the experience of delayed CINV is about 70%. And the etiology, as we know, the chemotherapy drugs is the most, uh, the basic etiology of the symptoms, which is it can associated with the taste change, namely, uh, namely such as the chemotherapy agent Doxorbicin or metrotexat, uh, and then most children, especially in children who suffered uh, from ALL, will be given corticosteroid also, and it can provide a tight and enhancing effect. And it's uh, kind of uh, some kind of uh, the emetogenic chemotherapy is too tight, it's moderate and the high, the moderate such as the ciprofosfamide and these doses and the high chemotherapy chemotherapy, for example, is cisplatin, the carbacin. And the uh, 
physiology of uh, this CIMT. Uh, the motor reflex response of vomiting that secretes content from the stomach through the mouth is generally followed by a sensation of nausea. And the process of nausea vomiting is regulated by several neurotransmitters, uh, 5-HTE, SP, and dopamine also. And chemotherapy agents are credited to cause uh, nausea and vomiting by activating these ne neurotransmitter receptors. Uh, and then they um, activate the camera receptor trigger zone or CTZ, vomiting center, and GF track, and also uh, this substance too. So it can happen the acute CINC, uh, can, it, can, it can happen 24 hours after chemotherapy agent, and the light CINC can happen uh, 48 until uh, seven, 72 hours until 7 days. And the complication, uh, such as the physical and psychosocial problems and negative effects. Physical and psychosocial problems as uh, like anorexia, electrolyte imbalance, weight loss, poor, poor, poor functional status, and anxiety. And the negative effect that we can find from the patient extending the stay of patients in shelters, increasing medical costs, the physical and mental deterioration of patients, and care delays, and decreasing quality of life of pediatric patients. I discussed about the pediatric CI and C assessment and evaluation. Symptoms of nausea may be more subjective and difficult to assess uh, and cause distress for the patients. But we need the appropriate basic assessment must be uh, we care as a nurse and monitoring the symptoms over time. Let me know she vomiting study for pediatric patients has been developed uh, now, uh, which can we can use the pictorial skill. That's one of pictorial skill by Annie et al. 2011. Uh, so uh, when we as nurse uh, ask about the uh, how the nausea or vomiting is, you feel like now you can't uh, ask uh, like this to the patient. So do you feel like vomiting or feel like you will? it before like that and how did your stomach feel at that time and then you can um, ask, ask the child uh, which uh, which number and which face that they feel like not right now which face can describe the symptoms you are feeling right now maybe like that and the challenge for us as a nurse uh, children with cancer uh, especially is uh, really at risk of malnutrition because they uh, can't eat well and prevention of malnutrition is an important thing for us because it can disrupt specific defense mechanism for especially for pediatric patients with cancer and increases morbidity and mortality due to, it, due to infection and malnutrition also uh, result in other pharmacokinetics for the patient impaired drug metabolism, increased drug toxicity and change in response of treatment a side effect of the chemotherapy of GI cause nutritional uh, disorder also. Uh, it's nausea, mucositis, and fatigue also. In order to prevent and decrease, uh, in order to prevent and decrease in nutrient intake due to the CIMP, nurse must have a strategy and program to maintain a child's diet. And this is the dietary recommendation for uh, the patient who uh, feel the nausea or vomiting or delayed uh, CINP, uh, since if, such as like eat lightly on the day if you get chemotherapy, a small amount often during the day, and eat slowly, drink clear cold liquids, eat land, dry foods that are easily digest, such as toast, cracker, or pasta, and avoid foods that are spicy, fatty, or salty, and avoid foods with strong odors, yeah. Uh, and then avoid, avoid the favorite food for the patient and provide food different using distraction or napping. So uh, we can use the distraction also. And another challenge, some, non, some non-pharmacological interventions that show uh, effectiveness in treating the effects of nausea due to the chemotherapy include uh, acupuncture, uh, guided imagery and also relaxation. And the other is uh, maybe you ever heard the P6 acupressor, which uh, can um, push here 
or uh, on our wrist and it's also the therapist that love to reduce nausea and this is this intervention is very safe for to, uh, if we apply it in the children and in terms of pharmacology based on systematic review study conducted uh, uh, from, from the pharmacology is prophylaxis with 5 HP antagonist with or without dexamethasone and with or without epipetin is recommended for pediatric patients who receive moderate or severe amethyphenic chemotherapy and uh, while for children who receive chemotherapy with low amethyphenicity it is recommended to use only 5 HP3 antagonist and a study by Roger et al. 2012, uh, he revealed that the coping strategies must often used by pediatric patients while undergoing treatment and managing, managing non-pharmacological nausea and vomiting. And this is the most uh, effective strategy besides a compressor and another is distraction. And maybe we can um, guide, guide them to think about their hopes or dreaming. Uh, and then social support from their parents, from their friends, and uh, sibling like that, and distraction also. Um, and from the leader at all, uh, 2011 also said that it's a uh, coping strategy used by adolescent patients in managing nausea and vomiting that is found is by using antibiotic drugs, dietary regulation, and psychosocial strategies. In addition, uh, we as nurse also need to approach and provide appropriate education to parents and the patients also regarding to the selection of non-pharmacological intervention in managing CINV patients. And the conclusion, uh, delayed CINV is a symptom that often results from chemotherapy in children with cancer and it's the most uh, side effect that uh, every maybe so many pediatric patients happen and knowledge of emetogenic drug classification can be a guide for preparing children and families in CINV management. Appropriate assessment and treatment of CINV, both acute or delayed, can prevent complications in pediatric patients and improve the quality of life of pediatric patients. And pharmacological, treat, pharmacological treatment, according to the latest recommendations, needs to be important concern for our, for us as health practitioners in dealing with CINC by naturally the appropriate non-pharmacological non-pharmacological intervention approach of children of age. And the recommendation delayed CINC in pediatric patients need more attention from us as health practitioners from the beginning of the chemotherapy program and uh, health practitioners uh, are expected to be able to identify precisely the classification of chemotherapy agents used by children so that the symptoms experienced by children can be predicted in the, the, the symptoms like CIM events. Thus, the selection of appropriate pharmacological intervention can be implemented with the application so we collaborate in pharmacology and non-pharmacological CINV management, uh, it can suitable for pediatric patients. And the implication of in nursing uh, as the caregiver, as our, role, our role as a caregiver and educator also, caregiver can start from the systematic uh, assessment in delayed CINV, not from the start only in the acid, but also in the delayed CINV, the duration, frequency, severity, and self uh, so from the self-reported patient, such as with the pictorial skill. An educator, we choose to pro appropriate intervention. We can educate how to manage the CINV. Maybe they feel it uh, after they go back to home, how to, man how to manage the CINV by the pharmacological and pharmacological uh, therapy. Okay, this is the references that I will used to this study and less uh, their laughter will make your heart melt, their strength will make a grown person cry. If you ever see a child fight cancer, it will change your life forever. Thank you.